Google Tag Manager is a fantastic tool to manage all of your tags on your website without having to write any code or hire an external developer. I personally use it to make sure that all of my tags are neatly organized since I tend to use quite a few of them and it also helps you know get rid of them when you no longer need them. Let me show you how I like using Google Tag Manager and how to get it up and running on your site. Let's dive in. Here at Thrive Themes, we love to talk about online marketing, building online businesses, and a little bit about web design and development. So if any of these things speak to you, you may want to consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Okay, Google Tag Manager, let's first take a look at how to easily set it up on your site, and then we'll discuss how to effectively use it. First, go to tagmanager.google.com. If you don't have an account created, go ahead and create one. And inside, you'll have to create a container for each individual site where you want to put a Google Tag Manager snippet. So let's say, for example, that you have a business called Coca-Cola, but you have a website for coca-cola.com and aquarius.com and fanta.com. Each of these websites needs to have its own container under your account. Then open up your container and grab the snippet that belongs in the header section of your site. Now, let's fire up your website, but don't close this Google Tag Manager tab yet because we're going to be using it later on. If you're building on WordPress and you happen to be using Thrive Suite, head over into your Thrive dashboard and under global scripts, you can insert the script that you, that you just grabbed from Google Tag Manager and insert it in the header section. This is a very simple and quick way of getting Google Tag Manager up and running on your site. But if you're not using Thrive Suite, and to be honest, even if you are, there is also another way of setting up Google Tag Manager on your website, and this is what I typically do. You can download the Google Sitekit plugin as this not only can automatically connect to your Google Tag Manager account, but this plugin also gives you some other nifty tools that are going to come in handy eventually. I mean, you can have the Google Sitekit plugin automatically connect to your Google Analytics account as well. You can have it run some really cool page speed reports and some more nifty things. I mean, this plugin is just one of those plugins that every time I'm building a new website, I just know that I need to install it and activate it and connect it to all these different tools that I always use. And once you have your Google Tag Manager snippet up and running on your site, an easy way to see if it's, you know, if you've installed it properly is to right click anywhere on your page, anywhere on your homepage, for example, and select the option to view the page source of your page and do a quick search for either Google Tag Manager or G tag and see if your tag is showing up correctly. Okay, perfect. We've got Google Tag Manager up and running on our site, but how do you use this thing? I mean, what is it even for? Well, Google Tag Manager can be used for very simple things such as tracking user behavior with third-party tools and a tag that I'm sure all of you watching will want to fire on your site through Google Tag Manager is your email marketing services tag, whether you're using Drip or ActiveCampaign or ConvertKit or MailChimp, you're going to want to let your email marketing service see which users from your email list are visiting which pages on your site and purchasing which products and, and services. But the only way to let your email marketing service track that behavior and user activity is by using a little snippet code that you can now place inside Google Tag Manager and have it run on all of your pages on your site. Now, why put it inside Google Tag Manager and not directly on your website? Because you technically speaking could grab that same snippet from your email marketing service and stick it in the header code of your site and not parse it through Google Tag Manager. Well, for one, think about having to manage all of those different snippets for all of these different uh, third-party tools. It's just easier to manage tags inside Tag Manager uh, than it is to, man to manage dozens of different code snippets. And two, it's also safer for you as a business owner to be able to see which scripts are currently active on your site, which ones were active and have been removed, and who has been making changes to your container. And you know, this last one is particularly true if you have a tech person doing the work for you, or if you simply work with other people and would like to have a record of what, you know, what changes has, have been done by you know, which person on your team. Now let's quickly talk about which tags you should be using. The first and most important one that we've already talked about is your email marketing services tag. I don't really conceive a business that can't benefit from having an email list. And if you're building up an email list, you want to be able to track what your subscribers are doing on your site. You want to be able to see, you know, which pages they're looking at, what content they're interested in and things like that. So that's one. Another one that I occasionally use, not all the time, but sometimes I do consider using them is any of these social media platform tags, right? I mean, if you want to run ads on Facebook or Twitter, having the pixel 
on your site can help you build up an audience of people that you can later retarget through ads on those platforms. But there is one thing that I do want to mention. Having more tags on your pages can definitely increase page loading times. This is because each tag adds additional code to the page that needs to be downloaded and parsed by your visitors' browsers. And obviously, the more code that needs to be loaded, the longer it's going to take for the page to load. Now, I rarely come across websites that make use of so many tags where I see a dramatic impact on, on page loading times, but it is something worth mentioning. To counteract the, you know, the use of tags on your website, you definitely want to be using a caching service. And that's something that I can teach you how to set up on your site if you watch this video. Ad roll is another tag that I have oftentimes set up for businesses that were interested in doing retargeting ads. The difference between putting Facebook's pixel on your site and ad roll's pixel is that with ad roll, you're essentially building up an audience of people that you can retarget across the entire internet through in-content display ads. You know, these are the ads that you typically see when you're reading an online newspaper or a magazine, whereas the Facebook pixel, well, it's good if you wanna build up an audience of people on Facebook and run ads on, on Facebook. As you can see, a lot of the tags that I have often used have been ad oriented or e-commerce oriented. Oh, and a really good one that I almost always use is Microsoft Clarity's tag. I should probably dedicate an entire video to talk about Microsoft Clarity and how to use it because it is such a powerful tool. I use it to sort of spy on visitors. I can see screen recordings of what they've done on my site, which pages they're looking at, how they're behaving on site, really cool stuff. But Google Tag Manager can also help you measure the performance of how your checkout process is doing or how your ads are converting. How? Well, by using custom events and triggers. Events are actions that take place and for which you would like to have a record of. An example of an event can be a purchase or when someone hits on a particular button on your website or if someone lands on a given page of your site, you know, the record of someone having done one of these things is called an event, something that took place on your website. Triggers inside Google Tag Manager are the reason why events happen in the first place. And, you know, let me just give you an example of how triggers work. In Google Tag Manager, to create a new tag, you simply click on the add new tag button and that is going to let you configure what the tag is, which in most cases, it will probably just be some uh, HTML code. For example, in the case of your email marketing service pixel, you would just grab the HTML snippet from your email marketing service and stick it in there. And then you need to set the trigger for that tag. You need to tell Google Tag Manager, when do you want the tag to load up? In the case of you know your email marketing service pixel, the trigger is probably going to be all pages, right? You wanna load up that snippet on all pages, why? Because you want to be able to let your email marketing services pixel load on all of the pages of your website to be able to track which pages your email subscribers are visiting. While I'm not a huge fan of some Google products like Google Analytics because the user interface is just really clunky and it forces me to use things like Monster Insights to make my life a little bit easier, Google Tag Manager is one of those tools that we have to be grateful for because, well, as you've seen, it is, you know, it really supercharges our marketing efforts by giving us more information about how users behave and engage with our site. I'm down in the comment section below in case you have any questions. If you'd like a specific tutorial on how to use Google Tag Manager for a given use case, let me know as well down in the comments. And yeah, useful links are in the description box as usual. I truly appreciate your time and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching again.